Holy Paladin didn't change much from season 2, but everything is just weaker. We are just weaker, so it is what it is. But we are usually doing the same stuff, using the same priorities, using the same abilities. So let's go straight to it. First thing to talk about stats. With Holy Paladin is quite easy one. Most priority is critical, then haste, then versa, then long nothing, and then mastery. Best to have zero, if you can. Critical just all around best, we are even playing talents that are critical, heals, as a healing 20% more. So very important to have a lot of critical. Second stat is of course haste, because we need to click a lot of abilities with Holy Paladin, and also our cooldowns, like Holy Shock, Judgment, Kusara Strike, there are scaling their cooldown with haste. So haste is also very important. Uh, then is versatility. It's improving our healing, improving our damage, improving our defenses. So versatility is absolutely important to the dungeons. Not so usually not so huge in raids, but in dungeons, yes. So you should start to get like critical and haste to 5,000 at least. Then you can go case numbers if you feel like it. But haste is good. 5,000 crit can go 6,000, 7,000 if you are really hardcore to recruit. And then the rest stats should go to versatility. My stats right now are quite alright. I have almost 6,000 critical, I have 5,000 haste and the rest is versatility, including buffs. And also, of course, the Guinnessaur's blood is best. It's absolutely best trinket for dungeons as Holy Paladin because it's doing what? It's doing critical chance proc. And I have a really good proc with that and so really happy about that. So now about talents. If you know exactly these talents, the link will be in the description of this video. So from last three, there is usually just one variation and is when it's incorporeal, you are going for turn evil. What you will get to there, you will just sacrifice 2% speed and 2% avoidance. It's something that you definitely can live without. You just change it over here. Other utilities we always play, so there is no reason to just keep changing here and there. And we have also this power always ready. So this is only a reasonable choice on the left tree and from the right tree, this is quite wild west. I was really digging deep on the right tree and I was trying a lot of talents, a lot of combinations and it's just personal preference because I didn't see any pattern they are using these talents for these keys and they are using these talents for this composition in dungeons and stuff like that. People are probably just choosing what they feel best to play with. So I guess it's, a lot of choices are good and you just choose something that best fits for you. Because I even tried them and didn't see some big differences. I even run exactly the same dungeon with exactly the same people. Exactly the same week, exactly the same day, exactly the same year. And I didn't see, I didn't feel any difference. Of course it was just 20, but still, I needed to heal. It's tyrannical, sometimes we need to heal on bosses. So some notable changes you can do on the right tree is these three rounds. So Righteous Judgment, Saved by Light, and Tower of Radiance. Just choose whatever you like. Usually people are going with Righteous Judgment. It's literally more damage from Concentration. So it's quite nice. There is just some, let's say, cheat that on beacons, it's quite decent or more holy power when you are a little bit casting more. So I guess depending on dungeons, maybe now with the ghost, then you cannot go melee, you are casting a little bit more. So you can go for that. So the, from these three talents, just choose which were is just best fitting in your mind. And there is also lore with the last talents. So this four, the bottom, very bottom row, choose three talents from these four. Just whatever you like. Well, whatever you like. Uh, don't choose a uh, second show product, never. If you are choosing this talent, you're choosing Awakening. And also here, you're choosing always Influences of the Samuel. You never go for Imperial Legacy in Dungeons. So yeah, it's actually uh, six talents, not four, but yeah, you are not choosing the two choices here. So this is extension for Tigre. Very decent, very potent. This is improving our Holy Shocks. Again, very decent. And Awakening, just free wings. Why don't we want free wings? We are always using Holy Spenders. And also just empowering us. I cannot say which one is better. I tried many of them and, and I like all of them. I, I cannot say, oh, I played this one and it felt better. Of course, I'm not doing 28 with Palladian yet, hopefully. End of the season. But yeah, just choose what you like. And also, if you are doing a lower keys, I. I really recommend to go for Veneration. Because Veneration is healing decently, it's just not as good as other choices. But when it's lower dungeon and you have Veneration, you don't need to focus as much on healing. It will just passive heal, it's quite a lot. It was doing 10 to 11 millions per dungeons. So 
really decent. It's just not pumping us all the talents when you really need to heal and right now. And not waiting for some cooldowns, but I really recommend Veneration. You can go something like that. Pull over dungeons and you have a lot of passive healing without even need to heal, but of course. If you go higher, you need to a little more focused heal. Let's move on on gameplay. So, from gameplay, on the start, I don't want to put this in priorities because it's like damage part of healing and then healing part of healing. We are not Disco Priest or maybe Misweaver Monk. We are not healing from damage. Unless you have Veneration Talent. We just talk about it. So maybe you do a little bit of healing from damage, but it's not our primary focus. But we need to do damage. It's nothing is happening or even when it's happening, but you don't need to heal right now. You are always doing damage. You are just always doing damage with Paladin. Why you are doing damage with Paladin? Of course, because it's damage. <laughs> Dungeon will be faster, of course. But you are getting Holy Power. So your damage abilities are generating Holy Power. And that Holy Power, then you can use for healing. So from damage wise, what you should use it's most important is Crusader Strike and Judgment. Crusader Strike is really cheap now. They decrease mana cost, so there is absolutely no reason to not use it. Judgment is a little more expensive, but Judgment is also preventing next damage taken. You can also in even increase it with the other procs. So Judgment is also very important, because now we have to target next 168,000 damage. We will prevent it. Look at this insane number. Maybe it's because it's target dummy, but it's still it's a huge amount. Do I have some dungeon? Yeah, I have some dungeon stats. So prevented damage 11 millions. I prevented 11 millions damage with judgment. So yeah, crucial strike and judgment you should always use for doing damage. If you have a little bit more free time for damaging and you don't need to heal that much right now, then use holy shop for damage too. But it's a little bit costly on mana. But it will do really decent damage and you also spread glimmer for damage. That's Right, both in the DPS too. Of course, Hammer of Wrath is another ability that is generating one holy power and it's really show on mana, but it's not always usable. The again need to be under 20% of health and you need to have wings. So, wings are Avenging Wrath. So, those three abilities we are just using between heals or when you don't need to heal to just generate holy power, you need to generate that holy power. You use that holy power for healing, and of course, if you don't need to heal much more, then just use Shield of Righteous, that is just pure for damage. So if you are full on holy power and you know you don't need to heal everybody, so just start spending your holy power on your shield of righteous to do extra damage. So we are doing some damage and just using our damage abilities. Another thing that is quite there's damage, but it's also very really important to have it because of healing is to having a consecration on the ground. And you should always stand in your consecration. Why you should stand in your consecration? Because on the left tree we have talent, strength of the connection. And I mean, while you are in consecration, your shield of righteous, more damage, who cares? And wall of glory, have 20% increased damage and healing. And that's we are going for 20% increased healing from wall of glory. So before even we start healing, we should be doing damage and stand in consecration. Also, consecration should be under enemy, just do that extra damage. So let's move on to actually healing, let's say, or healing abilities. This is another thing you should have always prepared but it's not damage anymore, it's our beacons. So, for dungeons, we are playing two beacons. Your targets with the beacon should be usually ranged DPS, and no, tank is not very good target. Why? Because tank is usually healing a lot, a lot more than others. That means, if you heal some targeted beacon, the beacon won't be duplicated, the beacon won't duplicate that healing. So, if you heal the same target with the beacon, it's not duplicated and it's just wasted. That means you will be healing tank a lot, so put you on some range of DPS, so they are getting more passive healing, and you will be pumping that tank. Of course, when tank is that kind, you won't be pumping him. You need to heal himself, usually. Another bonus with range of DPS is that you have some shiny talent, and that means mastery is shared not only from your position, but also from position of your beacons. So that means we usually stand on melee, as we want to generate holy power with melee abilities. And consecration is also melee ability. We are standing on melee, that means we are far away from ranged. But if you have beacons, we are healing them to mastery. Of course, you don't want to go any mastery to dungeons, but you have some quite a lot of mastery, even when you have low numbers or zero numbers. That's some decent extra healing you will just get from good placement beacon. Of course, if you have some target that is like lower item or just a boss player or dying all the time, just put it on him, just whatever. 
because you want to just keep him healthy. But usually Lange and DPS is best choice. Then we have Holy Prism. Holy Prism, we should use almost some cooldown. There's no reason to not to. He's doing decent damage and he's doing also decent healing. So from healing wise, when we use it on enemy target, he's healing a nice AoE. And we use it on friendly target, will heal nice single target and deal damage to enemy. That means we are healing AoE, putting on enemy, we are healing single target, putting on us. And damage wise, then we want to do AoE damage, we put it on friendly target, and we want to do single target damage, we put it on enemy target. So this ability, just good to use it on cooldown, it's 20 seconds. It's not that often, but it's quite often. So moving on to actual healing ability, wow, prism is too, but you know, damage a little. So word of glory. What is Vogel Glory? It's big heal, and that big heal requires now some mana and 3 holy power. So that's why we are generating a holy power, and it's also increased by 20% when we are standing in Consecration. So, we are doing damage, generating holy power, and then when we have enough holy power, we are spending it on Vogel Glory. Ideally, if you can decide who to heal, don't heal targets with beacons, because healing will be shared through them. But if you heal target with the beacon, it's usually much weaker. So if the target with the beacon is not the lowest health in a group, then just try to heal somebody else because he will get then shared heal from beacons. Then we are using our Holy Shocks and Holy Shock. Yeah, it's just heal, but there is a lot of mechanics about Holy Shock. So let's dig into the mechanics about Holy Shocks. So first and most important one is the Glimmer of Light. Glimmer of Light you can, is over here. And what Glimmer is it doing? So Glimmer of Light is applied when you use Holy Shock on target. It's applied on enemy and it's apl applied on ally. And that Glimmer will be activated when you apply another Glimmer. So we can use another Holy Shock. Or we have another talent. A spending Holy Power has 25% chance to trigger Glimmer of Light healing and damage. That's the second way how to trigger Glimmer healing or damage. Another mechanic Glimmer that targets the Glimmer help 10% reduce damage, but that 10% is split evenly among them. So if you have Glimmer on 5 friendly targets, everybody got 2% defense. When it's only on one target, it's 10%. And it's also matter for damage and healing. Glimmer is healing for set amount, but that amount is split to multiple targets if you have more Glimmers. It's increased by 4% the more Glimmers you have, so not that bad but still is healing the more from one target and just getting weaker when you have more targets targeted with the Glimmer. But it doesn't matter because it's getting a little bit stronger. Uh, you shouldn't think about that, but just keep it in mind when you have Glimmer only on two targets, it's not like you are basing Glimmer now because it's not on five targets. Yeah, it's healing decently, it's just split between two targets, not between five targets. So absolutely not bad to have it just only on few targets that you actually need to heal and just everybody always, all the time, just spread it on everybody, so it's not like the rest of the it. Just put hot on every single target and you are good, no, 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 it's not so required. And another note about Glimmer, you can have maximum 8 targets with a Glimmer. It doesn't care if it's friendly or enemies that are counting, same count. So it's maximum 8, so think about when you are healing a lot and then you want to use Demon Tool on enemy targets. And you have 5 enemy targets, you need to count on that that two of your friendly targets will lose Glimmer, because you will be overcapping that eight targets with Glimmer. I almost forgot to add to Holy Shock, there is one more mechanic, is actually from Glimmer, but yeah, it's Holy Shock, because Glimmer is Holy Shock. So it's our new two-piece. So when Glimmer of Light dissipates, or is refreshed, it creates Holy Reverberation on its target, and that will be healing over time, or doing damage over time. You don't really need to think about it. It will be just happening. Only thing you should remember, but now it's a little bit more worth it to just spam Holy Shock on the same target because it's star healing to overtime effect or doing more DPS. You can forget about it, it will just do some healing to whole dungeon. So Holy Shock is also healing 20% more from abstract tongue over here. And also when we do critical, we are getting infusion of light that is improving our next abilities. So this is also from other talents, from talents over here. So it's a little bit stronger even because I play that, if you're not playing that, it will be weaker. But with that buff up, Flash of Light cost 0 mana. It's 100% free. Holy Light generates is 2 holy power, but we are not using Holy Light only if you are using Hand of Divinity cooldown. So 
we are always using it together. So Holy Light, we are only using it at cooldown, so it doesn't really matter. That one and Great Judgment prevents 150% more damage. That's also very massive. Usually it's branded on our Great Man Judgment. That's how we are using other bonuses, it's just something extra. And if you don't have melee, we are casting Flash of Light. So, that's Holy Shock. That means we are generating Holy Power through damage. Then we are using the Volvo Glory. If that is not enough, we are starting spending Holy Shock also for heals. And it's of course also giving you some Holy Power. And that Holy Power we are all spamming again on Volvo Glory. If we don't need to heal, we are spamming your Shield of Righteous. And so, on end of our priority list is Flesh of Light. It's just if you don't have some Holy Power generated and you are not on melee or Holy Shock is off cooldown, then we are just casting Flesh of Lights and ideally you want to cast it after you get some stacks of Infusion of Light so it's 100% free of mana. Because otherwise you will run on your mana really fast because it's just eating and eating. Alright, now everything together. So we are doing damage, we are standing in Consecration, that is doing damage too. That damage is generating Holy Power. Then we are starting to use our 20 second cooldown, is Prism. After that Prism, we are blasting our Vault of Glories. Important to stand in Consecration to 20% increase. After that, we are doing Holy Shocks. I would say Holy Shock and Vault of Glories, like similar priority. It just that if you have 5 Holy Power, definitely go for Vault of Glory. If you have just 3 or 4, you can still do Holy Shock because you won't overcap that 5 Holy Power. So when you have 5, definitely go for Vault of Glory. If you don't have 5, you can choose Vault of Glory or Holy Shock. Maybe something just worth more to use it right now. Because you maybe just want to heal a little bit more AoE, so we go Holy Shock to some Glimmer mechanics and stuff like that. And on the end, when we are not happy, we don't want to do that, but then we are casting Flesh of Light, ideally with two stacks well. But any stacks of Infusion of Light, because it's three of mana and we are using that if you don't have melee access and we don't have cooldown on Holy Shocks, so we have no way to generate some Holy Power, then we are just casting Flesh of Lights. That you don't want that to happen, but it's happening, so don't be scared, just keep casting. It got buffed, it's healing more than before, so just go for it. Now about cooldowns. So first cooldown I want to talk about is Avenging Wrath. I just usually call it the Binks. I always use it, there is no reason to not use it. If you don't need to heal, just use it for increase your damage. It's increasing your damage healing and critical star chains by 15%, so another thing that is increasing our critical strike chains that is very huge. So just pop it and start healing, just pop it, start doing damage, anything, anything you do, it will be better with Avenging Wrath. So just use it on cooldown or just save it when you are expecting some harder part of the dungeon. Then we have Daybreak. Daybreak is now affected by our 4 piece and 4 piece is doing our Daybreak have 15 seconds less cooldown and after we use it, we have increased haste by 25% for 6 seconds. Daybreak is even more important than previously and that 15 seconds cooldown is nice because for dungeons we are using talent that is shortening divine 2 cooldowns by 15 seconds that means daybreak and divine 2 is now same cooldown so we usually want to use it together because they work nice together so how we are using that what other bodies daybreak doing daybreak will activate glimmer on the targets for 200 percent effectiveness and then it will eat that glimmer so it's consumed also give you back some mana, that will be nice for whole duration of a dungeon to get that mana back. That is that easy part of Daybreak, or rather not so good. The absolutely massive part of Daybreak is Rising Sunlight. So after casting Daybreak, your next three Holy Shocks cast two additional times. So we have three triple Holy Shocks. That's absolutely massive because all that Glimmer mechanics, all the stacks and activating your two set so think about Daybreak, more about that triple triple Holy Shocks than just some heal that is consuming Glimmers that is not so huge. When Daybreak is activating Glimmer of Light, it doesn't matter on how many targets you have, its healing is not split. So the more targets have Glimmer, the more effectiveness of Daybreak. So if you have only one target, you will heal 60,000 let's say, and if you have only 5 targets, everybody gets healed by 60,000. It's not split as basic Glimmer of Light. So think about that, so ideally, when you have more stacks, we'll glimmer to the whole party. Then we get that triple, triple Holy Shocks, 
but we lose all the glimmers. So what is best combination with that? Guess what? It's Demand Tool. Demand Tool will apply Holy Shocks on fire targets. Also, you can use Demand Tool for enemies. So you can just eat all the glimmers, then you use Demand Tool exactly immediately after it. Of course, it will do nice healing. It will apply Glimmer to everybody in the group. And then you have five Glimmers ready for your triple, triple Holy Shocks. And that will just heal a massive amount of combo. So now you just heal nice AoE, then you aid the Glimmers and you use Demon Tool. And after that, you will be just sniping low health targets with that triple Holy Shocks. And that will also be shared to the beacons and your target with Glimmer will be pumped too. A little note about Divine Tool, when you use it as primary friendly target, it will be healing primarily. If you're using primarily on enemy target, it will do damage primarily. So, when you are just healing, use it on yourself, whatever hoover in the group. You have five targets, it will heal five targets. If there is not enough targets close to you, it will start doing damage. And same when you click it on enemy target. So let's see if you have one boss, and you click it on boss. So in that case, it will be one Holy Shock to the boss and four Holy Shocks for healing. So now with the short and cooldown daybreak, the one tool should be our go-to cooldowns. When we are healing single target, when we are healing AoE, when we are healing single target, you can just use a daybreak, use the one tool for damage, and then just blast with triple triple holy shocks to a single target healing. Then we have Tear of Deliverance, also nice cooldown, and it's still quite short one, it's just one and a half minute. What it's doing, you will pop it, it will start healing. And you can actually forget about it. But when it's also active and it will heal, it will increase healing of your other abilities. So it's also increasing heal from others. So you can combine it, you can just use it alone. It's nice healing, it will be just healing faster than every one second, like 10,000, 11,000 to lower cell target. So usually not over healing and it's decent heal, so just, just click it, forget it. Usually don't see the change when you have active or not, but it's there. Just healing silently, but nice numbers when you check them overall on the end of the dungeon. Then we have another Hands of Divinity, so it's empowering our next two Holy Lights. If you are playing Extend of Tear, I mean Holy Light is extended by 8 seconds, then use it always together, because they have also the same cooldown. So when you cast Tilt Relevance, you also cast Hand of Divinity, and you use that two Holy Lights to extend your Tears Deliverance by 16 seconds. If you don't have talent for extend tears duration, then just click it when you need to heal some single target, cast it, then boom, two huge heals with your holy light. Our must loved we have laying on hands. What is that? Don't count on it as a heal. Think about it as something that will save somebody's life when some shit will go out. Don't think about oh I have laid on hands, I will heal that with that. I don't use some other cooldown. No. You use some other cooldown first. And this is just one last lizard when everything else failed this is last thing they will use and let's not forget about our bubble and we are not talking about your own one of course your is working on absolutely everything and you can only use it so yeah just save yourself but of course when it's huge area you can save yourself that means you can heal more others so you save some healing on you but blessing of protection is quite important because there is a lot of physical damage in dungeons and there's a lot of bleeds in the dungeons so like bleed on the first boss in dark heart ticket or from the kitties doesn't matter any bleed you're not a walker you are pardon you cannot be a walker you cannot dispel bleed but blessing of protection can it's five minute cooldowns that's quite long but still it's free dispel like when whenever else you will use it on tank no <laughs> because everybody will die but yeah, think about it, at Bleed Dispel there is a lot of bleeds in these dungeons. We also have Aura Mastery, use it when your group is getting a huge burst away damage. And from the last cooldowns we have Blessings of Season. So, you have four seasons in real life, also in World of Warcraft, what a coincidence. Every season is doing something different. After you use one, the next season will be in order. All of them have a 45 seconds cooldown. So let's start from Spring. Spring one is increasing healing taken by 30% and healing done by 15%. So, when you will be healing some AoE, then put it on yourself, increase your healing by 15%. When you know you will be healing just one target, then put it on that target, because that 30% healing taken increased will be much better on single target. 
If you don't need to use it, but you want next blessings, just put it on tank. Tank will definitely use it. Badet Knight is absolutely amazing on Badet Knight. So tanks are usually healing themselves. So if nobody else, just put it on tank and just move on to our blessing. Then we got next blessing and that's summer. Summer is increasing damage. So just put it on some DPS and you should try to time it to some big cooldowns he's using. So it's nice to see cooldowns of others. So just put it on DPS and he will be doing DPS. Don't put it on Augmentation Evoker because Augmentation Evoker is not doing much damage on its own. Just put it on some real DPS, not support. After summer, we got autumn and autumn is decreasing cooldown. So it's increasing cooldown generation. You can say it like that. Use it on yourself when you need to heal a lot. If not, use it on DPS. That's profiting a lot with the resetting of cooldowns. And very last is Blessing of Winter. Blessing of Winter you can only use on yourself in dungeon because it's regenerating mana. So just put it on yourself, you will get 10% of mana back during duration. So always on yourself. You cannot use on somebody else because they are not healers. So I won't dig into damage because we already talked about it. We are using our damage abilities to generate holy power anyway. And if you want to pump a little bit more min maximum damage, we are using Holy Shock on damage too, and we are using Die Break and Divine Tool also for damage purposes. Of course, combine it with the Emerging Wrath. And that will be all for me. If you want to see the exactly same guide in the text, is on my Discord. So you find Discord in the description, check it there. It's everything what I said now, just in text. And anyway, thank you for watching. Think about liking and subscribing, it will help me a lot. And goodbye.